Welcome YouTube to All Things Nerdy, where I try to bring you all things nerdy. And this is going to be a new video series that we'll be focusing in on, where we try to uh, talk about tabletop gaming, Dungeons, Dragons, Pathfinder, all sorts of things like that. But to do that, I think we have to answer the question, what is tabletop gaming? What is Dungeons and & Dragons? And why should you care about it? Now, this is a question that I've come across a lot of different people asking to explain what this is. Um, having new players trying to explain to them what's going on here. And the best way I've been able to come up to, to do that is with some popular video games, like Skyrim, for example. Skyrim, you have a, a fantasy world you're put in. You're playing a character that you make. You, that character can be whatever race you want it to be, be it elf or human, or uh, I don't think it can be a dwarf, but a half-orc or, or, or whatever. You know, you can choose what kind of character you want to make. You know, you pick its race. And then you choose how you would want to play him. Is he, is he a mage? Is he someone who has a lot of magic? He uses a lot of different spells? Is he a archer, perhaps? Or maybe maybe he's more of a, a, a smashing guy. He has a big hammer or axe that he likes to wield. You know, so you go through this big story. A, a campaign of sorts. And as you go through this campaign, you come into combat. Well, in combat, you know, you swing your hammer to hit that that crab or giant or whatever, and the game itself is mechanically built up through numbers, and these numbers determine if you hit, if you do damage, how much damage do you do, those sort of things, you know. So as that axe comes swinging through, there's all sorts of equations going through the air that are determining what's going to happen. It's very visually appealing because you're actually seeing how you're able to hit and you can adjust accordingly. So these numbers make up a large part of combat. You, again, it's visually appealing. You're able to see what's going on, but you're able to, to coherently be able to do things. Aside from that, you have a story, right? There's a story usually going on, all sorts of NPCs you meet. You have this big, big rich town that you can go explore, go into people's houses, learn their story. All these different NPCs, you know, you have all these side quests available to you if you were to go through and talk to the different town town folk or go down and outside of town into into the forest and you find a little hut and all sorts of things like that. So that is that's largely what Skyrim is. That's what, largely what a video game is. With Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder you have exactly the same thing. Before video games, you had largely the same exact thing. Uh, with that, you know, you had um, a story-driven campaign. You had characters that were trying to hit things. They had math. You just did the math yourself. And you would always determine everything with using little, little dice. These little dice were ways of making up the equations themselves without being overly complicated. So... The best way to explain it is using the exact same analogy. Skyrim. Skyrim is a very popular game. A lot of people like it. A lot of people replay it. That sort of thing. So with Skyrim, you know, if let's say I wanted to play Skyrim with my friends using the tabletop method, you're going to have one person who is the dungeon master. He's essentially your referee. He's the one telling you what's going on through the story. He's the one telling you uh, what kind of numbers and what they mean. You know, so if I want to swing my axe and hit that hill giant or that crab again, I'm going to give him my numbers of what I'm capable of. I'm going to roll my dice, and then he's going to tell me what that means. He's going to do all the all the the other equations and sorts. Now, when I say there's equations, there's not an overly complicated math system going on where you're going to have to have a, a extra piece of paper and a pen and a, a possibly a calculator. It, it's not that complicated. Again, this dice really makes things a lot easier. You know, you're just adding to whatever the dice roll is. Now, aside from our DM, we also have players. Usually you have more than one. Um, you can do one-on-one -on -one adventures with a DM and one person, but usually you have a couple different people. You know, three, four, five is, is a decent size group, but the DM has all these different players that he's telling a story to. He's essentially a bard in that sense where he's telling you a story and you are living out the actions. Now, you can literally do anything you'd like. You know, it's always ill-advised, just like a video game. You play Grand Theft Auto. If you're going around murdering everybody, you're racking up little stars across the top, and that's bad. It's going to hinder you from being able to do the story going forward. Well, that's the same thing with this. 
if I'm playing with my group of friends and I decide, you know, I, I want to go into that tavern and, and start killing everybody, well, it's going to have impact. It's going to have ramifications. Like with Skyrim, you know, if I go into a place, the town's going to be mad at me that I'm going in there swinging my sword at people and guards are going to come try to arrest me or fight me, something along those lines. Now, of course, I can always choose to fight them, but that's going to hinder the story if I kill an important NPC. So, again, you're story-driven. With the players, they all are comprised of different characters, whatever you would like to make up. You know, usually with a group, you make them together so you have a, de de a, a decent balance of players going on. You don't have everybody playing the same exact thing. You can have a variety, a, a group, a fellowship, kind of like Lord of the Rings. You have a different party. You have a makeup of party, at least. So the DM goes through and he just explains the story. He's telling you what's going on. Now, you can be all sorts of different styles. You can be more descriptive, you know, saying, hey, this is what the scenery is like. You know, it's a very foggy, dense area. Um, it's kind of a cool morning going on. He, he can be more descriptive to kind of help put you into the world, or he can be very simple and explaining, hey, guys, you are you go into the tavern, and in front of you is a, a barmaid. She asks you, how can I help you? Simple. You know, not describing the whole thing, but just keeping characters focused in on whatever they're trying to do. And then the players, in turn, can turn around and they'll, they'll describe what they would like to do. They may talk it out, whatever. Now, that is largely what it is. What Dungeons & Dragons is. What Pathfinder, what tabletop gaming is. But why should you care? Why should you get into this? Why is this something that you should try out? Well, largely because it's a fun time. You know, having a group of friends, you always go out with your friends and you have a good time, right? Usually, if you're out doing something, you're having fun. You're socializing. This is a good time to socialize. With video games nowadays, you can still do that over the internet. You can socialize and have a good time, but there's still sort of a barrier. My screen, your screen, we're not connected. We're not sitting next to each other. With this, we can all be sitting around a table, having a good time, joking around, making comments about each other as the story's progressed and you find interesting things, do interesting things, you know, have, have a good time and, and joke around. And it's a very fun social time overall. Aside from that, it's a very interesting way to have these great stories. Dungeons & Dragons is a very old game system that they've continuously updated over time, you know, come out with new additions, you know, to help streamline the rules, make it a little bit easier for new players coming in, a little bit easier, more more classes, all sorts of things like that. But back when Dungeons & Dragons was uh, fresh and new, a lot of people delved into these worlds and they went on to create big movies or TV shows, write books. There's all sorts of books out there, people who went through and had these crazy adventures playing through Dungeons & Dragons, through Pathfinder. And then they went on and saved the archives, they may have wrote down some things of what happened or used their memory, and they turned it into a book. So, your favorite popular book, you know, we'll just use Lord of the Rings as an example, that could be exactly what some players went through. One player was playing Aragon, and he thought, this is a good idea for a book. This was, I had a lot of fun. I'm going to turn this into a book. Now, obviously, Tolkien did not play and create this through Dungeons & Dragons, but it's an example. So combining the social element as well as these outside-of-the-wall stories creates a good time. With Skyrim, you can have a good time, but you're single by yourself on your own, and these stories are sort of on a railroad track. You, you have a little room of customization, you have a little room of, of tailoring things to your own need, but largely you're, you're on a single track and you have an end point of what's going to happen and you have a start point of how things are going to happen, unless you're throwing mods in there or, or things like that. But with tabletop gaming, you have no restrictions. The DM, he has a set of rules that he tries to keep things followed by, and then he tailors the story as seats fit. So again, using the example of Skyrim, popular video game, spoiler alert for the ending, hopefully you've beaten it by now and you understand how it ends, but towards the end you kill a big dragon. That's, that's pretty pretty epic that's awesome you, you fight a dragon you kill him and he, he's your big antagonist but in dungeons and dragons there's a lot of different things that are possible and, you know the the dm he has a set of rules that he follows to try and keep the story tailored to you he may go through and you can create dialogue with this dragon and and find a way to 
solve things through dialogue or, or get favors from him. You know, hey, I'm not going to kill you, but uh, you owe me. Something like along those lines. Again, it's all created through dialogue. In real time, you and I are chatting things out, and based on how I perceive my character to you, you you react. So as it, as the DM, if I'm coming through and saying, "There's there's a large ogre," and and he looks very very sad, but he takes notice of you guys walking into the room. He seems to be kind of shoved off to the side. You notice that? Okay, well, there's two things. He's an ogre. He might not be good. Should I fight him? Or well, what's he sad about? Maybe maybe you could chat with him and find out that he's just going through a rough time. He he lost a, a family member or his his favorite club is is been left behind and you can go find it and he could help you out because you helped him out. All these things that are possible because the DM has a story set up. It's very easy to get in on one of these games if you're if this is something that you're listening to and going, yeah, I'd, I'd try it out. Me, myself, a friend of mine had never played before. Years ago, we were working together and he just said, hey, what are you doing Saturday night? I have nothing going on. You know, what, what's going on? And he told me that, hey, we're going to be play, playing some Dungeons and Dragons. We figure, why not? So I thought the same thing. Why not? Tried it out. Fantastic time. I fell in love with it several years later. Now here I am, you know, I run my own games. I play with some of my friends. It, it's a good time. And these games are really easy to get into. If a group of your friends are, you know, semi-interested or you can talk them into it because you want to try it yourself, all you need is a book. Uh, it's called the Core Rule Book. If you're looking at different systems, everybody has their own system. There's Dungeons and Dragons is the most well-known, I, I, I think, Pathfinder is the most simplistic, in my opinion, version of rules. Pathfinder is its own set. You know, there's there's Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder. That's a, a different party, a different uh, company. Essentially, cr- created their own universe, so things are easy to follow. And then there's all sorts of other ones. Like there's a Star Wars role-playing game, which has the same set of rules, but you're in the Star Wars universe. There's superhero ones. So if you want to, you know, fight Magneto or you know, you want to be pals with Batman, you can do that too. It's just all these different set of rules. Essentially what you'll need is a core rule book which just explains what the rules are so you understand how, how the mechanics of the game work and you'll have to have somebody be your DM who's going to be your referee, your storyteller. And he'll have his own book. It'll be usually a game mastering guide which just explains again the rules to him so he knows you know, he's sitting back here telling you the story. He can go, yeah, um, this is what's going to happen. Uh, this is kind of the effect of that, that sort of thing. So if you're interested in getting in on it, I advise looking into those books. You know, they're they're not cheap, but they're not expensive either. You know, 20 bucks for a core rule book, not bad, considering you're going to be able to you reuse it a lot. You know, nowadays books are, are kind of a fleeting thing, but there's PDFs all over the Internet as well. You can download a PDF just to read through it if you want to check it out. I advise, again, just look into it. It's a fun time. Um, online, there's there's all sorts of communities as well that you can play with online people with. You'll have a similar setup where you have a, a box right there, and you'll have other people who will be down here usually with their own boxes and webcams, and you'll just play the game over the Internet. You'll have a, a little, um, like Roll20. That's a website that, lets you play Dungeons & Dragons, lets you play Pathfinder. On the internet, you have a digital grid, so you can put your characters up there, you can roll your dice there on the website, and it it lays everything out for you in that sense. So you can play with people all across the world. You know, you still have that social aspect because you're face-to-face with somebody, but it, it may cut out a little bit of the social aspect because you're not there with people or people you know, maybe, you know, you're making new friends or something. But, yeah. I advise again, check into it. It's a good time. This is going to be a new video series we'll be doing where we dissect and pick apart all sorts of issues. Not issues, but um, themes, characters. We're really going to dive into Pathfinder and, and explore what it is. So if you're familiar with the system, we'll be talking about all sorts of different classes, um, issues going on that they could be problems they're not you know more of a discussion sort of thing and as always guys be sure to tickle that like button down below it helps me out it lets me know that you guys are interested in this sort of thing going forward and it gets me excited and motivated to do more 
Um, don't forget to subscribe. I got to do that typical YouTube spiel at the end where I, I tell you, hey, do all these things because it's awesome and, and I appreciate it, which I do. But other than that, guys, thanks for stopping by. Stay nerdy and have a good one.